Drupal and dashboards are historically not the best fit. However, yesterday I shared a screen on LinkedIn of our latest developments of the Content Planner dashboard. So this is what you get when you install the Content Planner module. This is a example dashboard you can configure. And in this video, I want to show you how you can do that, that on your own Drupal site. My name is Lucas. I'm the founder of NetNode and NodeHive Headless CMS, which is a headless CMS solution on the top of Drupal. And we are also the developers of the Content Planner module, which is the thing I'm going to explain today, specifically the dashboard functionality. So I'm going to show how you can recreate something like this very quickly. So I have here a new installation of a Drupal 10 site with Content Planner module version 2 enabled. And first, I, what I want to recreate is this welcome back um, widget. For that, I go to settings. And then you see here, I have uh, several um, widgets available. And the one I want to enable is the welcome user widget. So I hit save. I stay in the settings tab and I get also here a dashboard preview because I have to place it um, specifically and can also set how wide it should be. Here I want to set it at the very first state and I want it to be only one column wide. So when I hit save, go back to the dashboard, I do have the welcome user widget. I can also change the title, for example, I can say welcome back and then welcome back username, which is a nice thing to welcome somebody. So we have created the welcome back widget. Next one, create content. So I can do that by going to settings again. Then we have a section content. I click on create content, hit save. And then I go back to the dashboard and voila, I get this nice little widget where I can immediately start adding content. Next is, I don't go into NodeHive spaces but because this widget is really uh, related to the NodeHive headless CMS uh, solution, which I won't explain today. Uh, so content status widget is also interesting. It gives you an overview of uh, all your nodes you have and in what state they are uh, based on the workflow you have selected in your uh, Drupal site. So I'm going to enable that which is the content status widget, save, go back to dashboard. Oh, um, I forgot to set the workflow ID. So I go back to settings. Theoretically, it can be possible that you have multiple workflows, not only the editorial work for workflow. That's why you need to select the workflow you want. So I hit save and then I also going to say this will be minus eight. So voila, we have now this uh, content status widget. What else we have? Uh, recent Kanban activities. Um, this is also functionality from the Content Planner module, recent Kanban activities. If I save them and I go back to the dashboard, I see who did what on the site. So let's say if I gonna create a new article, test article, save. And then I go back to the dashboard. Um, you see, oh, now it doesn't work for whatever reason, but it should appear here that there is a new activity because I created this new uh, article. Actually, I think it's just because, um, now go back. Yeah, now I rescheduled it. So adding a new node does not appear here, but if you reschedule something in the Content Planner e ecosystem, uh, it will appear here. Also, if somebody has updated it. So um, additional things. So my recent edits is the next one. So I go to my recent edits. I save that as well. And then what's important here, um, because it needs <coughs> a little bit more space, we should um, set the width to six columns so that it's always full width. Voila, here is my here are my 
recent edits. And here is also my latest edition I just did before. What else we have? Motomo uh, graphics. I cannot demo that because I don't want to um, show the credentials, but I just show you how it works theoretically. So if I enable this Motomo monthly graph stats, I hit save. And then, for example, I go to configure. What I have to do is I have to set the Matomo URL, then also site ID API key, and I can add a call to action link, which will be this one at the bottom, to whatever page I want. And then it will this will this widget will pull the data from the Matomo backend and show the statistics um, immediately. So very simple to use. Um, I'm gonna disable that. Um, but now I want to focus on web form submission um, and the submission. So <clears throat> for that, we create the two web form reports, just enable both of them. And here, what I want to do is I want them to be three columns wide. Also here, three columns wide. And when I go to the Dashboard, um, actually I want that to appear before because I like to have, <clears throat> oh no, I have to go to settings. Recent Kanban, I set to minus six. Um, and this one, Kanban, um, oh now this is too wide. I put that to one. And now I have the active and the last submissions. Voila, this is how I want it. And now what you get is you get all active web forms. You see how many submissions that were done over the months. And also you see the latest um, submissions. And here you can also define if you don't want to show one month, you can also say, I just want to show the last three months or six months. <clears throat> Then you get a little bit of statistics. So if you want to kind of measure the conversions per month and you get what are the latest submissions, that's very handy, very easy to use. Yeah, um, there are some other widgets which are maybe a little bit more technical. For example, you can enable a, data ta a database table report. Um, this is certainly interesting during development, for example. Um, I just add that at the very end and also six column wide. And what it will give you is a overview of how big the whole database is and also the size of all the data, uh, databases. It's actually something site builders might find interesting to just uh, yeah look into what's going on on the database and maybe react on that. There's also one which had called system information which gives you um, some information about the underlying host. Um, so I go back, I just enabled it. And then when I scroll down, you see the database driver PHP version, a loaded PHP extension. So yeah, very practical, very easy to use. Um, certainly not on the production side, but still you can use it whenever you want. There are other widgets. I don't want to go into details now. This is just a short demo about how you can use the Content Planner dashboard. And by the way, the Content Planner module, uh, we created that um, already years back. I think we started developing in 2018 already. So the dashboard solution is there for many years actually. But recently we started to work on the version two of the module. That's why, um, yeah, we have a much more modern view with this like multiple columns, much denser look so we can show more information on the dashboard. And that's why we also are excited about and talk about it. And just also to mention the content planner module dashboard has nothing to do with the dashboard initiative that exists in, in the Drupal community itself. Um, I'm not closely related to them. I'm also part of the Slack channel and from time to time I, I, I try to help um, building the dashboard solution. This is really content planner contrib. Uh, that's important to understand. But nevertheless, you can install it on your site. There is uh, zero dependency except the scheduler module because we use the scheduler module for the whole scheduling. 
yeah, that was it for the demo of uh, how you can build your own um, dashboard using the Content Planner module. If you are interested in more content like this, let me know. Uh, we can, uh, I can talk about it more and show you much more of the contents and the ideas we have and also more functionality around the Content Planner and maybe also about NodeHive Headless CMS. Um, let me know what you think in the comments and also if you're interested in more of such content, subscribe the channel. We're gonna publish more content soon. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Ciao.